good afternoon and uh, welcome to the daily wrap up with Forex Analytics. And we're still seeing the dollar relatively quiet. The um, dollar was under a little bit of a pressure this morning. Let's go look into that closer. It was under a little bit of pressure. Then uh, Fed's Harper was stating he does not see low European yields as competition for the U.S. We need to make a decision which is best for our own economy. Uh, and he's on hold right now. Now, he's a non voter. But uh, he was making his two cents available. Um, <clears throat> you know, I said it, uh, spent a couple of minutes on the uh, European crossover webinar on this. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is, I think that, that uh, Pat will be, will show that he's accommodated. And it's not like it was a month and a half ago where it was uh, Trump versus the Fed. This is more about really a direct link to the mess that Trump has made. I mean, it's not about politics, but that's just the truth of the matter, okay? Uh, the mess that he's made with, with the negotiations with China, okay? Um, him trying to bully him about or whatever, and I'm gonna throw on threat more, um, you know, tariffs, has basically put China where a point was. They, don't, they have no impetus or motivation to go in and negotiate. So when nothing's gonna happen, and it's not like I've been saying this new, I've been saying this literally for four or five months. There was not gonna be a deal with China, but uh, under the circumstances that we're, we're playing out. But he's exacerbated it so to the point where we're not gonna head for a recession. There's no doubt about that. We're going towards a recession. Um, I think one of the other officials that maybe was Hawkins too said, well, uh, if we do get the tariffs, then I'll be open to doing the, 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 the you know, cuts at that time. Well, I, I made, you know, remark on Twitter, essentially, he wants to see the house burn down before, you know, then he'll get the insurance. And my take on that is, is once again, this whole situation is, yes, the economy's been strong, but I've been saying that for months, is that you've been seeing the purchasing managers, uh, you know, and other ancillary data points come in weaker as they've been expecting things to worsen with China. And they actually have worsened those doubts, but that should go and increase. And the problem is, is that with these other banks that are going towards stimulus, like the ECB, you know, BOJ, give me a break. They've been working on stimulus since, since some of y'all were born. That's how long that it's been. Uh, but anyway, that being said, the problem is, is, is that if he isn't accommodative, it's going to send the dollar index sky high, okay? And it's only going to go in and exacerbate an already difficult situation. For multinationals, also with the tariffs, it's just going to increase. It's basically going <clears> to <throat> basically go <clears throat> bring this to a head much faster. Uh, so basically, by, by putting in a cut or uh, giving the indication that they're willing to go in and cut, which I think that Powell will say that, uh, <clears throat> it, it provides a cushion from what's to be in all likelihood to be expected. It's not about prop, propping up stocks. Uh, there's no reason technically, I mean, when you look at the economy, there's no reason to be cutting, but right now what we've got is an unusual, you know, storm out there on the horizon, which is big, this big row with China, which isn't going to get resolved anytime soon. And the administration has only made things worse. So where now the markets feel like, boy, the worst of it is going to be coming. So if he doesn't do that, what's going to happen is not only do we get the dollar take off like a, like a scalded dog, then of course, equity is going to sell off. And then all of a sudden, now they do have to take action the following month when they said they weren't going to take action. And now it looks like they're way behind the curve. And then that really spills open the economy to a further concern. That's what I'm saying is it's not like he's cutting tomorrow. It's not like he's saying I'm doing 50 basis points next month. But he, I believe he will say that, um, you know, and also I don't know if you saw was the labor statistics says that uh, they were able to knock off about 500,000 jobs uh, from, you know, revisions going back to March. So, you know, he's not going to be able to completely say, hey, the economy is doing great, employment is great. Uh, not after the Labor Department just going and took off, shaved off 500,000 in revisions. Now, not that the, uh, the labor market is poor at all. I'm not trying to say that. But I'm just saying is he has one, lace, uh, one less leg to stand on in regards to this. So, once again, like I said, I myself believe that he will be show that he's going to be accommodative under the circumstance. He may not come forth right and push it, push it out there, but I think he's going to show that he's willing and open to that and at the very least be interpreted as a mild accommodation. And in that turn, I think that, that would allow the dollar to pair back. Now, if he shows he's more accommodative, 
I think we can get a further pullback in the in the dollar. No, I don't think the dollar is going to come apart like gangbusters. But I do think that um, if he were to show he's willing to be accommodative or it shows that he's more open, I think we could make a move back down to this 96.50. That probably translates to about the euro, maybe, oh, I don't know, probably about 12 and three quarters or something like that. The euro's not going it. Look, the euro's not going anywhere anytime soon. We know it's a junk junk economy. Uh, for the most part, uh, that's no news. I mean, you know, Draghi's going to be the first uh, first ECB uh, president to have never raised in throughout his entire tenure. Okay, there's a reason why the euro is this week. Uh, let me go closer so you can get a better perspective. Okay, you see this? There's a reason why it's this low, okay? It's not because it's a temporary hiccup. That euro zone is just one big mess, okay? Um, and like I said, that's not me saying it, although I'm saying it, that's the market telling you, okay? So, but that being said, they're going to look to going in for the ease. And what Har uh, um, Harker was saying is he's not worried about what the uh, the bun yields are doing. Well, you better go in and worry because, as I mentioned, is that that's just going to go in and further things um, and make them more difficult in light of what we're already dealing with. We already have a fire on the backside. OK, so if you're saying, well, I'm not really worried about this little fire on the side, maybe it's a little bit more than another fire. Well, then you're going to be dealing with two situations because one's going to accentuate the other one. That being said, as things get worse with China, you're going to see, as I mentioned, if they don't do any action, then you're going to see the dollar take off an, an extended lake, which is going to put more pressure on the economy. And then the economy will buckle as far as a recession. Then we will definitely get a pretty good, pretty good sizable chunk of a recession and that will worsen things. And then the Fed's going to chase to go in and, and cut the rates and show that most people at that point are going to say that they're inept, they're behind the curve. And I don't think that's necessarily the case, but you have to go in and take the insurance cut. You need to go in and show that you're going to, look, he's not cutting. He's going to show that he's going to be accommodated. I think that's going to be the case. That's my two cents right here. Uh, the Euro has had some ups and I thought today was kind of key. I'll go in and jump into this. Um, <clears throat> Okay, you see here with the uh, the the uh, bun yields, we've gone and come back, and if you look at this, we've broken this this trend. This trend line's been in place for a little over a month. Okay, uh, but to me, more importantly, when it happened this morning was when we got the German PMIs. Now the services PMI did better, but not the manufacturing PMI. So we actually jumped up, okay, or lower in yields, and we came back. So, but look, the German data. Look at this German data. It's been in the toilet, and it's been in the toilet for a while, okay? It's not like we were talking about this back in, I think it was March or April, when we were starting to see the, these ancillary figures coming out that expectations were winding down. We say, boy, you know, this looks like this got to develop something a little bit worse. And so look at this. This is solidly, I mean, you know, if you want to get a laugh, so to speak, look at France, above 50, bordering on 50 for the manufacturing PMI. Look at, at Germany. Man, pull the submarine horn down, down, down she goes. And it's been like that. It hasn't been like that in the last one month, two months, three months. It's just been solidly going down and really has, has continued to push lower and lower and lower. So once again, like I said, the, uh, the ECB is looking to do more additional stimulus. Now, uh, there's been a point that's been made, I think Blake made that too, is how they can be able to do the stimulus if they don't, they have to have something left you got to have something left in the, you know, as far as your gunpowder if they do get the Brexit. And um, if they do get that, then things could really worsen for the Eurozone. And, they, and if they spend all their spend the wad, then what are they going to have to do to combat when they really see the slowdown in October? And I did see here, uh, come across here that says, um, a senior German official says, Merkel's 30 days remark was just being polite. Those with knowledge but believe she has concluded the train has already left the station, and it's impossible to stop the no-deal Brexit. So once again, you've got to have something left in the tank or in the in your uh, <clears throat> in your in your barrel to go on and shoot out. If you blow your wand in September, what's what are you going to do in October when poop really hits the fan? So there's a thing that they may be they may have to wait. I think Blake mentioned that in the chat room. They may have to wait on the bazooka. That may allow the euro to garner some ground 
And uh, if that's the case, we can see this this boon pair back. So I think that the euro's open to going in and seeing a rally. How much it will rally? Really, we're going to have to find out. We could see one thing feed on another, which has been some talk for about the last couple of weeks about the euro being a funding currency. And if we were to take off, I think we saw that before. I think it was in 2015 when the euro rallied up like 700 pips. And I was trying to remember what was the catalyst behind that. And I remember now it was the, the idea that people were, were selling the euro and buying everything in China. And uh, when, when the thing flipped the other direction, obviously it sent the euro. And I, I'm trying to remember where the euro was. I think it was like at 112 or 113. But anyway, it said it zooming up to like, I think it was 118 or close to 118. I mean, it was in the course of about two and a half days. We saw like a 700 pip rally. So uh, now the year is still hugging around here, but I think there's still the possibility that we can move higher. We'll see what happens. It's gonna depend on what, what um, uh, Powell says tomorrow. I have to think, look, it makes, it makes sense that he has to show at the very least, at least tepid accommodation to indicate, hey, look, we're monitoring the events. You have to acknowledge that things aren't going well with China, okay? So by acknowledging that would say, well, okay, well, if you're saying you would, if things get worse and things look like they are going to get worse, like, you know, what the house is already on fire and it's halfway burnt down and you're saying, okay, we'll do this if it burns down. Okay, well then, in all likelihood, it's going to burn down. Well, that's a bit of a, a stretch on the analogy, but my point being, as long as he can, he can make that tepid, at least tepid accommodation, then connect the dots and say, wow, you know, things aren't going to get, go any better with China. We should be getting some accommodation, and then we'll see where that takes us from there. Um, that's my two cents on that. We are seeing a nice little pop-up here in the uh, cable. You can see here we got past the what's been the bias chart resistance for about the last, I think, almost three days. So we did jump up here. We even got just above this area right here, which is 22.46. We're kind of holding above that right now. We'll have to see what happens with the whole um, you know, Brexit and situation, we know that uh, Boris Johnson's so volatile. Um, Dolly M is still holding up, you know, in a very, very quiet mode. We made the case I mentioned in the uh, uh, European crossover this morning. Uh, I thought when we made that first run up here, I thought we were going to finish the, I thought we were going to take another run up here towards about 720. I thought there'd be a great short, but we didn't get that follow through in Asia and we just kind of came down here and we hung around here. We've just been sitting here in no man's land. We'll have to see what translates. If Powell is accommodative, then I think we can make that run. <clears throat> but the market is not going to stop here at that point because then you'll be goosing a lot of stops. I think we'll make eventually, potentially, depending on how open is, potentially run to 788 before the market starts to see. You can see some good resistance um, step in here. I think... Um, <clears throat> Dale made a comment about uh, he thought potentially they could get to 109. I think that's a stretch. I mean, the Fed would have to be full on more than accommodative. <clears throat> You'd have to see Powell, you know, walking about in a dove suit to see something like that, where we could eventually, I'm not saying tomorrow or the next day or the next week, but to eventually make it all the way back up to nine, that is really one kind of a stretch. But I think you would see a pretty good pair back here at, 780, at 788 here. Um, Everything else is relatively quiet. We're not seeing a whole lot. We did see the peso hold yesterday into the bias chart support of 64 and a half. We did move the resistance down here to 78. But other than that, everything is relatively quiet. Uh, if we go into the cross rates, you can see here that uh, we're seeing the sterling gain against the odd. Look, and we already know the odds are weak. So you're like, well, who cares about that? Okay, yeah, well, you're right. Well, the odds have been pretty weak. But look here against the, the, the guppy. Look at that, making a pretty good, pretty good run here, too, here in the guppy. So, yeah, we're, we're seeing this across the board here with, uh, with the sterling, uh, not only across the, against the dollar, but also against uh, the euro, against the odd, against the yen. Um, we are seeing the euro move a little bit higher against the Kiwi. We did see the Kiwi come under pressure as the yuan went to new to the lowest lows uh, since 2008. So um, other than that, not really a whole lot. You can see the Aussie yen is trading relatively quiet. Uh, tomorrow is going to be that big event that will start to kick things off, and that's going to be Jackson Hole. And other than that, that, that's all we have. But thanks for joining us here on the um, 
Uh, that's next day of the wrap up. And once again, you may want to go and consider taking a 10 day trial, as I've said before, with Forex Analytics. Uh, fantastic uh, uh, mobile app, mobile app pro programs or apps, I should say. I actually was uh, out and about a couple of days ago, and I was actually not only tracking everything, but I was actually, uh, you know, was able to see and even make some posts, uh, you know, in the chat room while things were move, moving about. Uh, as I mentioned before, is I uh, said it once, said it again. I mean, there's great analysis with basic, technical, macro, LA way, harmonics. But to me, the real strength is going to be the chat room. And uh, I think, like I said, if nothing else, as we start to gear up and things start to lighten up, light up um, in FX land, as we get towards the end of August, things light up. Uh, you may want to go and consider taking that 10-day trial for a dollar. Uh, uh, pick up the hood, check under the hood, kick the tires, and see what it's all about. Uh, I think it's going to be you know, quite advantageous for you. But that being said, thanks for joining us here on the daily wrap up and have a great rest of the trading on a very slow August trading day.